GPT-4 was released today, and to see how good it is, I wanted to rerun my reverse prompt engineering code test, which builds a PHP comment remover. So to do this, we're going to build the prompt sequence, and in order to do that, we need to copy the code of the PHP remover. So we'll paste that in here, and we will start feeding the prompts into GPT-4. It's very important that you actually select GPT-4 because it's not selected by default. Okay, the first prompt is done. Let's paste in the second prompt. Okay, so this is new. So it's actually given us three prompts to do the same uh, reverse prompt engineer. So uh, hopefully when we do the main prompt, it doesn't give us three, it just gives us one really good one. But let's paste it in and see how it goes. Okay, so we have our reverse prompt. Now let's create a new chat. Make sure we switch it to GPT-4 and paste it in and see if the code it generates is the same as our PHP comment remover. Okay, so our code is complete. Now let's paste it into the PHP document that I prepared and we will see if it has generated what we want. Okay, so it's got a, a, uh, an input box here. Let's go grab some code. This one has heaps of comments. So we'll paste it here and we will remove the comments. And there you go. It has taken it from 10,000 down to 3,400. It would appear that it has created the problem of not including the new lines. Um, but honestly, GPT-4 might be able to handle that. But that is quite a substantial difference. One thing to note is that GPT-4 currently is quite slow. So if you are in a hurry or you're using this day to day, like if it's a if it's a complicated task, you'd probably use GPT-4. But for probably most tasks, you might want to use GPT-3.5. So there you go. Uh, I'll be making more videos about GPT-4 in the future. And if you like videos like this, be sure to subscribe. And I will see you in the next video.